In this video, I go over the top 3D printers for miniatures and terrain under $600. Let's do it. Hi everyone, Danny the 3D Printing DM here. Thank you for joining me today at 3D Printed Tabletop. This video is one in a series called Printing the Game. And it's a play on Matt Colville's Running the Game. I owe a lot of who I am as a DM today to that series. And this is very much meant to be a tribute to that. And I hope to be able to help other people that are new in their 3D printing journey to be able to either decide what type of printer and what type of tips and things they can do better. So that's what this series is about is helping people get started and get better at doing their own prints. Starting with choosing the right 3D printer for you. When 3D printing started a couple years ago, it was really expensive, but that's not the case anymore. It has dropped in price significantly. You can get a printer for as cheap as $100 or $200. I think the good starting point right now is about $200, and that's where I start in this video. And you can get amazing results. In order to show the type of quality that you can get, this isn't gonna be a typical video 3D printer review. It's gonna be a combination of a community spotlight where people with all of these different printers that I recommend in this video share their work with you. And so you can see the type of quality that they've gotten on their printers. And this isn't just me, Danny, a guy who, who loves it, it's passionate. These are other people in the community who are doing these prints and trying to do the things that you're gonna wanna do too. So I want you to physically see what type of results to get. So when I explain the difference between these printers, you understand what type of quality these printers are capable of and attach that to the price. I need to say something before I get into the into actual reviews. For those of you who are looking for a perfect printer, you may be disappointed. I had a, a conversation with one of the models in our community, his name is Devin Jones. He's the one who created OpenForge, which is a lot of those tiles that you see on Thingiverse. And Devin said, he said to me something that stuck and I wanna share it with you. There are no perfect answers, only trade-offs. You can have detail, but you can't have it with really cheap material and a really cheap printer. You can, you can have a cheap printer, but you'll sacrifice some detail. Or you might have a printer that you have to put together, assemble it all yourself, and run some of those risks. You can have easy assembly, unbox and print, but you'll sacrifice utility. Build volume. You can get surprisingly good quality on a cheap printer in FDM, but you have to spend time tuning and tweaking your printer and really working hard to get those types of results. It will take time and that's another trade-off. And, and this is the foundation of choosing your printer. It's setting your expectations and being honest about what you need, why you're choosing the printer you're choosing and the level of quality that you're comfortable with and excited about. Which is why I'm doing this video in this format. It's not normal for YouTube and I hope that it works for us. I think we need to see this type of thing before we make a decision a lot of time. I expect you to still do research about whatever printers I share today. And I have tried to select the printers that are most recommended in the community that I see all the time across Facebook, Reddit. Uh, those are the biggest ones that, I, that I have, I'm on all the time and that this is what I see. Our printers, there are plenty of people printing awesome prints that are not on these printers. I would spend, it would be a very long video if I included all those printers. Uh, for the most part, you can tweak whatever printer you can, but I've made these because these are pretty much beginner friendly choices that I think extend for both techie, non-techie, people who want you know kits, people who want sets. And so I've tried to include a good mixture of everything, but still getting the highest quality. So now to the good crunchy stuff. Here's a clip of a boring spreadsheet that presents my pseudo quantitative summary. So you can pause it if you wanna look at it a bit longer, but I include this for those people who are, who like these types of things. It's what I used in the beginning to, to make this video. In the budget beginner category, first up is the Monoprice Select Mini V2. This is $199 on Amazon. Uh, the Monoprice Select Mini is, it's probably the most, V2 is probably the most popular budget 3D printer available right now. There's, there are cheaper 3D printers, like I mentioned, but not with this quality and not with the ease of setup that comes with the Select Mini. And it does have a pretty small build plates under five inches, but this is still a great printer for somebody who's interested in breaking into the, the, the space without too much financial commitment. You'll find tons of people online who have this printer, which is good because they can help things when they go wrong or if you wanna make things better and try to fine tune your, your prints. 
There are very solid communities for the spinner on Reddit, Discord, Facebook. You'll find support if you need it and if you want it. I promise. I can, I can guarantee that. Setup is relatively easy. You literally just take it out the box. You pretty much get the bed leveled and you're pretty much good to go. And it's also pretty small and cute and good for desktops. One con though is that the build plate is pretty small like I mentioned and you will have trouble printing bigger pieces of terrain and even some of the bigger minis that might need to be split up or cut in different ways. You can also upgrade the bed and extend it a little bit to solve that problem, but that does require some research and some extra tech savviness, but it's not required by any means. I don't want you to think that. That being said, if you're okay with having to split things occasionally and prints taking a little bit longer, it is a very good printer for the price. The quality and speed might not be as good as some of the ones at the end, but with upgrades, this printer can print like the big boys. And I have seen people print like the big boys without any upgrades too. So, you know, it's a great option if you do want to do the mods, but if you don't, you should not feel bad about getting this printer. It's a great printer for a starter. You also want to make sure you get the V2 because there's lots of manufacturer changes that make this a better and safer printer than V1. In, in the mid-tier category is the Monoprice Maker Select V2, also rebranded as a one how i3 or cocoon the the maker select v2 is a phenomenal entry-level fdm printer with minimal assembly required it's got much bigger build plate than the mini select and it's overall a great choice for folks who are interested in modding and some post build tinkering with their first printer the maker select v2 what it does is it improves on the select mini it's got a sturdier chassis a bigger build plate and i gotta say that eight inch build volume is a great starting size for a 3d printer with terrain I haven't found any terrain that won't print on a on a bed of this size. I'm and I'm sure somebody's gonna prove me wrong and link me the thing that does not. But I think I think most terrain is safe. You'll find it never hurts to have bigger build plates, but it can feel limiting at times when you don't have that bigger build plate. So this printer pretty much comes assembled, which makes this great for the folks who are afraid and don't want to tinker. But fair warning, while it can work very well right out the box, it is very common for folks to mod theirs, things like the MOSFET board upgrade and, and Z braces for extra stability. And this is almost unanimous. A lot of people add these and they've kind of become very, very, very nice to have upgrades that a lot of people do. And if you wanna push it to the limit, then I think you should do it. And you should, you should get on YouTube and learn how to do it and get your hands dirty and not be afraid. But if you don't wanna do that, it's totally okay. However, I think that the next option is gonna be a better choice for you if you are one of those people who just no interest in modding or upgrading or anything like that. Next up is the big brother of the Monoprice Maker Select V2, and that is the Monoprice Maker Select Plus. It's currently selling for $359 on Amazon and at only $70 more than the Maker Select V2, I think it's safe to say that the Monoprice Select Plus is probably one of the best choices for someone who wants that bigger build plate than the Mini Select, and they just want minimal tech work. They just wanna to get to printing great results and they're willing to spend a little bit more to have an already upgraded printer. On a price it was they took some of the flaws of that Select V2 and they improved it, which means less work to get this printer up and running the way you want it to be running. If you like the Maker Select V2, but you're afraid of mods and upgrades and playing with that board, then this is probably a very good choice for you. The hassle saved will be worth your time, definitely worth your money in my opinion, this can help save a lot of headaches that come when you are trying to do those upgrades. And, and that might turn you off from 3D printing if you're new and not used to this type of hobby. And I don't you get frustrated trying to learn how to print because at least you're seeing something happening. When the printer isn't working, it sucks. It's terrible and I don't want you to be there. So let's not, let's not go there. Next up in that mid-range bracket, a big one is the Creality CR10, which is $499 on Amazon. <sighs> the CR10. This is a printer I own. And I, and I will try my best to be partial and fair to it, but I can talk more about it because I have it and I lived it. And that's why this is almost like my little mini review of the CR10. It's a perfect machine, but the CR10 is a great, great, great choice for someone with a little more money to spend, which is okay with minimal kit assembly and for somebody who's looking for a very good quality with a big build plate, right? Lots of optional mods too, this printer is great for people that want to do things like cosplay, and that's why this printer has broad appeal outside of the 3D printing tabletop community because of its flexibility and its quality. As I mentioned, the CR10 has the biggest build plate volume of all the printers on this list. It's the biggest bang for your buck in that regard, especially if you're interested in printing things outside of minis and terrain. I mentioned cosplay, that's probably the best example. And even though it has this large build area, quality isn't sacrificed, and 
you know, mine is unmodded. And I, you've seen my results. I think they're pretty good. I, I'm very happy with them. Actually considering it's an FDM printer. Until I get my hands on a resin printer, this level of quality works for me. And that is, that's me. It might not be you, but that's why I'm showing you these pictures, right? I've left this printer running for 40 hours through the night. I haven't had any issues with it outside the occasional failed print, right? Which is usually user error. It is a kit, but it is one of the easier kits, especially with this kind of design. There's there's no soldering required and it just the assembled, you just assemble the brackets to the frame. It's kind of like an Ikea build. I will, will note, you can get a clone of this, like a TiVo Tornado, which is a cheaper version and it's a clone. And that's the trade off here. Uh, it's it's riskier and it's why the TiVo Tornado didn't make this list because I don't think it's nearly as beginner friendly as a CR10. And if you're very tech, technically inclined, you've probably done the research and you might be more interested in that sort of thing anyways. So this guide probably doesn't work for you if that's the case. But either way, the CR10 has a very active online community for, you know, folks love to mod this printer. And so you have a lot of research in case things don't work out for you like I did. It's, uh, and it's become a community favorite among all of the 3D printing communities in general too. In the upper tier category is the big brother of the Creality, the Creality CR10S, which is $599 on Amazon. You can get it cheaper though. I've seen it as low as $370 as of last week on Light in the Box Gearbest. For, so for $100 more, you can grab the upgraded version of the Creality CR10, which is called the Creality CR10S. Also an FDM printer, the, the CR10S, it's a great printer. And it's a great choice for someone who likes everything up at the CR10 and just wants a few nice extra features and a more stable frame. And much like the Select, Select Plus, you know, for a little over $100 more, Creality added a few more features. The build volume is the same, but now it has dual LED rods for more support. There's filament out detection, so when your filament announce runs out, it stops, which is a really nice thing if you're leaving it running for a long time and you're not home. And it has a print resume feature, so if your power goes out, it can keep printing. And, re and recently that the source code got released, so maybe we'll get something like that for the CR10 soon, but none of these features are required though, and I wanna focus on that because in fact, all of the prints I've shown on my channel up until this point, and a lot of these prints that I'm showing you today, they, they went without them. So keep in mind, both the CR10 and the CR10S are very large printers. They require a good amount of space. So just keep that in mind if space is an issue for you and looking for your first printer mention is the Prusa. I can't go throughout this video without mentioning the Prusa, even though it, every single printer, the kit and the assembled one is more than $600. The kit is $750 right now for an i3, which is the newest model, and it's $1,000 for an assembled kit. This is the most recent Prusa, and it's a beast. It's almost all of the good printers and the affordable printers are clones of the Prusa model. And with features that none of the printers in this video have that are optional, not necessary, but they're definitely huge quality of life improvements. And I feel that the price is justified. Only reason it didn't make the cut is because it's above that $600 price mark. So if you're watching this video and you don't care about the price or you're willing to pay a lot more, this is my go-to recommended printer for everyone, everyone, and highly recommend it. In categories. Okay, if you have been watching this video and you just haven't been impressed or you want more than what you've seen from the FDM printers, then listen up because the next two printers are resin printers and are the best quality you're gonna get for under $600. Because there's so many similarities between, you know, with resin printers in general. We'll be comparing the two side by side, the Photon and the Wanhao D7. We'll go through the pros and cons of each of these. First printer I'm introducing you is the Anycubic Photon. It's an SLA printer for $539 on Amazon. So the Anycubic Photon is an SLA printer with almost mold-like quality, but it also has a pretty small build plate and very expensive materials, resin. Generally the case with resin printers, they're expensive, but the quality is the best for what you can pay for at this time. How Duplicator 7, it's a different type of resin printer. It's a DLP printer and it costs $569. That is without the control box on Amazon. If you do wanna buy the control box, it's gonna add another $100 to this printer. Just FYI. More, it's more expensive and has a larger bed than the Photon. One major downside, like I said to the D7, is that it is a kit, you gotta assemble it. It definitely does have more of a learning curve as a result than the Photon does. D7 also does not come with a console, which means you either have to hook it up to your computer or to something like a Raspberry Pi with Nano DLP installed. The Photon, on the other hand, is pretty much print and play. Just take it out and it's an excellent choice for those people who want a printer but don't, want, but don't want to do the tinkering and don't like the kit. It also does not require a separate computer like the D7 and you can work with the console that's in there. So there's the trade-off, right? It's a kit and it's more expensive than the Photon, 
but has a larger bed. And of course the tech, SLA versus DLP, if that is a big thing for you. Although I think at this scale, it's not much of a difference once you prime it, once you start painting it. As far as the community goes, the D7 definitely has a bigger user community. And it doesn't surprise me because the D7 is a kit and generally this type of kit printer brings people together. You know, the ANA A8, which is also a kit, it's an FDM printer. That's not on this list because it's cheap and it can be dangerous for, non, for, for people who struggle with tech stuff like me. But the ANA A8 has a huge group because you have to pretty much follow step by step and you can, you can mess up in a, lot, in a lot more ways than with something like the Photon. And it's the same for the One Hao D7. And the Photon is a newer printer, but it also has a very big growing community. And I will say this, in our online printing community, on Reddit, on Facebook, it seems like the Photon is the overwhelming winner right now. So many people buy it, they love it, have a great experience with it. So if you are, are set on a resin printer, it seems like this is the com community's consensus as the darling of our community, I feel. Doesn't mean that a D7 isn't good, but it's, I think, better for people who want that kit and want that experience of building and want the different tech than the Photon. The other thing I wanna say about resin printers in general is that resin is generally cost prohibitive. You spend anywhere from maybe 20, 30 cents to a mini to, to more, to one, two dollars for your mini, depending how efficient, how good your process is. Terrain is even more expensive and FDM is just way cheaper and way more feasible in this regard. Resin printers are also dangerous substances and you have to be safe with them. Pets and children have to be kept away from the materials because it's harmful. You have to use proper protective gear. That's important to say. Uh, some people care about the odor, other people don't. Ventilation is always recommended. So to wrap this up, that fo the Photon is probably a good choice for the, for the non-techie person who wants to print resin minis and doesn't want to print very much terrain or might already have an FDM printer. And the D7 is probably better suited for the tinkerer who wants that fine detail and again, isn't planning on printing very much terrain. For those of you who have already been looking at 3D printers, you probably noticed, hey, my printer isn't on that list. Or maybe it is and you're like, yeah, I feel good. <laughs> I want to cover a few things, why I left certain things off the, off the list, etc. right? I'm including Delta printers because I, the Cartesian model, easier to understand, less moving parts, and more printers right now are Cartesian designed. They're clones of that Prusa, right? That same type of concept. So, and more support, I think. I think it's the most valuable experience for somebody who's new to 3D printing in general. What are clone printers like the ANET or like the ANET 8 that I mentioned, the TiVo? I think that these require a lot more technical savviness outside of the already kits that I shared with you. And people up for the challenge, and that's great. You can probably do it. You probably won't listen to this video anyways. <laughs> we'll say that for most people, I don't think that these are very beginner friendly and they're potentially dangerous, okay? Issues can happen, even though those are in the minority, they can still happen. And I am hesitant to recommend that type of experience for somebody who's new, who wants to get printing and want to have good results. So we made it to the end, folks. You know, I enjoyed seeing the prints in the community and collecting it together, and I hope you have too. I hope that that helped for you to see the different quality and help determine, oh yeah, I think I'm okay with that, or I really need, you know, this type of quality. And for you to see that FDM printers in general can pretty much get similar quality and resin printers in general can get pretty similar quality. It's a matter of what's good for you and what trade-offs you're looking for, like I had mentioned. If you are ready to buy a 3D printer, I've included some affiliate links down below, which is a great zero cost way for you to support this channel. And I would appreciate it very much if you are at that step and you are ready. Once again, I appreciate you being here. Thanks again and happy printing.